So in this video, we're going to figure out why the cross product is distributive, or in other words, why is it that A cross B plus C is equal to A cross B plus A cross C. And in order to do that, we're going to start with a simplified version of this idea. In this case, we're going to assume that A is perpendicular or orthogonal to both B and C. So in other words, in that case, we could think about A as pointing straight out of the board. In that case, B and C are both going to have to be in the plane of our board. So if we define A as sticking out like this, some B vector that points out here, this is our B, and then we have some C vector that points like this as our C. In that case, we could think about finishing this parallelogram that we've made, just like in that determinant video. And if we do that, we're going to get a final result here if we go all the way through of B plus C. Now we need to think about what happens when we take the cross product of A cross B and A cross C individually. Remember, first of all, that because A is orthogonal to both B and C, when we take the cross product here, sine of theta is going to be 1, because the sine of 90 degrees is just 1. So we don't have to worry about this part. When we think about what happens to each of these vectors, well, the magnitude of our B vector is already included in the formula for the cross product. But when we take the cross product, we're going to multiply it by the magnitude of A. So in other words, this vector is going to get scaled up by the magnitude of A. The same applies to the C vector and also to the B plus C vector. So when we take the cross product, we can think about taking this whole diagram and scaling it up by the exact same amount. The other question is, what happens with the normal vector? Or in other terms, when we take the cross product, where are all these vectors going to end up? Well, to do that, let's think about using the right-hand rule. If we start with A as our first vector, that's going to point out of the board, and then we curl our fingers towards C. The third orthogonal vector pointing down is going to be our cross product. So in that case, we're going to take A cross B as this vector right here. Notice it's orthogonal to B because we have a 90 degree angle here, and because it's still in the plane of the board, it's also orthogonal to A. We can do the same thing to C. We have to scale it up by the same factor as we scaled up B, and it's going to end up down here. And now, just like in our diagram up here, we can finish the parallelogram that we've started forming. So we can draw in that second red vector, and then our second blue vector like this, and this final intersection point down here, we can think about adding the two vectors. So this black vector is precisely A cross B plus A cross C. Because we know this red vector is A cross B, and this blue vector is A cross C. When we add those two up, this is what we get. Now we have to think about one more thing. What is A cross B plus C? Well, B plus C is this black vector in the middle. When we take the right-hand rule on it, we're going to point our fingers in the direction of A, curl them towards the direction of B plus C, and our thumb is going to point straight down, exactly in the direction of A cross B plus A cross C. Those two vectors are going to be at the same angle. We also know that every single thing in this diagram gets scaled up by the magnitude of A. So everything in this second part is exactly in proportion with this first part. We just rotated it down 90 degrees. That means that we know this vector is both A cross B plus C from this black vector being turned down and A cross B plus A cross C from these two parts being added together. Therefore, these two things must be equal in order for that to make sense. So now we've proved this identity when we have B and C both orthogonal to A. 
But the question is, does this still work when B and C are not orthogonal to A? So let's say that we had A looking like this as our vector here, and then we had B pointing this direction, like that. What would be the cross product in this case? Well, one thing that we can do is think about the angle theta between the vectors A and B. What would happen if we took only the component of B that is perpendicular to A, the component that's orthogonal? Well, in that case, the length of this vector would be something very specific, B times sine of theta. The reason for that is that we can actually think about this vector setup in terms of just a 2D geometric figure. Remember this B sine theta part is supposed to be orthogonal to A. So we have a 90 degree angle here. We could think about this as just being the X and Y axes of a normal plane. In that case, we'd have X going this way and Y going this way. If we had our vector B pointing out like this, and we wanted to find the vertical component of B, well, we know in terms of horizontal and vertical, sine theta is going to represent the vertical component of a vector, and cosine is going to be the horizontal component. Just like on a circle, the sine of that value is the vertical component, and the cosine is the horizontal. So the vertical component of this B is going to be B sine theta. And if we let our horizontal axis be A, just like before, then the component of B that's orthogonal to A has to be B sine theta. Now what we need to think about now is what is A cross B sine theta? In this case, B sine theta is already orthogonal to A. We know that that's true. So this is going to be equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine theta times, well, the sine of these two things is just going to be 1 because they're orthogonal, times the normal vector. This is exactly the same as the magnitude of B times sine theta, since that sine is just a number. So we know that A cross B sine theta is this right here. Well, that's exactly the same as the formula that we have up here. And because B sine theta is in the same plane as our vector B, the normal vector is also going to be the same, which means A cross B sine theta equals A cross B. B sine theta is perpendicular to A, just like in this diagram. So if B sine theta has this distributive property, then B is also going to follow the exact same property because we can always reduce for cross products any vector down to just the part that's orthogonal to A, and that's going to be where the sign comes from. So that's the generalization of this proof right here to any vector. We just reduce it to its orthogonal component. And this diagram is the proof that the cross product is distributive.